Okay, second video. First of all, uh, thanks everyone for the positive comments that I received so far. Uh, it's really great to see how enthusiastic people are about creating this project. Uh, so yeah, let's keep that going. Uh, in this video, I'd like to address the open issues that we saw in the last video. And I want to set up prettier and use lint uh, to maintain uh, the good, good code quality that we want uh, from the beginning of this project. Um, so yeah. Let's get started with the errors that we saw last time. Uh, so if you open up the console, you'll see uh, a few different warnings and errors, and we're going to look into all of those. Okay, first of all, the uh, gamma factor warning. So since version uh, 139 of 3GS, um, there's no gamma factor available anymore on the WebGL render. Uh, this is because 3GS now uh, handles color management by themselves, so we don't have to do that anymore. Um, this is actually also mentioned in the React3 Fiber documentation. Uh, if you go to the V8 migration guide under the color management section, there it is. Uh, you'll see that color management is now being handled by 3 uh, from version 139. Um, and if you would go to the 3GS documentation in the WebGL renderer, you will not be able to find anything regarding gamma anymore um so yeah we can safely remove that from our code um it will not affect our scene there will be some uh other consequences regarding color management that we will uh, see in the next video uh, but we're gonna fix those there for now we can go to javascript to the javascript folder and then application.js and in there we should have a gamma factor uh, which is being set to 2.2 we can remove that line of code I'll comment it out refresh the page and there we go that's the first warning which is gone all right so the second warning is about audio context which was not allowed to start uh, this is a valid warning um, it's mentioning that it cannot start because there hasn't been any user gesture yet on the page. Uh, so that's uh, in general in the browser, there always needs to be some sort of a user interaction before any audio can be played. Um, so yeah, from now on, you can hear the audio, um, but before any interaction, you couldn't, um, which we also didn't want. Um, and we could fix this warning, but um, if we go to Bruno Simon's website, and we go to the console there you'll see that the warning is there as well um so he probably left it there on purpose and while we are going to develop the the code and, and transform everything to react fiber we will actually solve this issue as well so it won't be the case anymore after that so for now we're gonna leave it here and we're gonna focus on the last error all right so the last error that we have is about uh, the 3js journey file which is not able to find uh, specific elements inside of our page. Um, so if you would go to the 3JS journey.js file inside of the JavaScript folder, you'll see that it's trying to um, get some uh, elements from the page with specific class names. Um, while we never included those elements with those class names. So we're still going to have to do that. Um, and those elements can be found in the index.html file. Um, so the easiest way to, to get this to work and to also not get any errors in the future uh, regarding elements that are missing, um, let's just copy over the index.html content, uh, go to our own index.html and paste everything here. Um, but make sure that you paste it afterwards um, here because we still need specific content from our own index.html file. Because for example, this diff uh, element with the ID root is being used by React and we are including the uh, main.tsx file uh, as well. So we need to copy over those files first before deleting all the content. Uh, so I copied them over and I'll paste them here instead of the canvas because uh, that one will be included here as well. Uh, yeah, let's save it and it will automatically refresh. And as you see, the error is now gone. 
Uh, the war warnings are gone as well, but that is only because we already interacted with the page before. Uh, if you would refresh, yeah, you'll see it's there again. Uh, but, but the error is gone now. Uh, the colors are still correct, so yeah, uh, everything works now. Please keep in mind that uh, this solution is only to uh, solve the error that we saw before. Um, but this is not the permanent solution. We are still going to convert all of this to uh, React, uh, including all the information that you see here. This will all be converted to React as well. Okay, so those were all the errors that you could actually see in the browser. Um, so we can close that for now. But for those who paid good attention, um, you might have noticed that as soon as we run npm install, so let's open an extra extra terminal. Um, if you run npm install, it's going to complain. Um, and this is because of conflicting peer dependencies. Now, what's happening here is that uh, we have a dependency, if you go to package.json, uh, called Leva that we uh, installed last time. Um, but Leva doesn't support uh, React 18 yet. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's where the conflicting dependencies uh, come from. It's trying to get React either 16.8 or higher, or 17 or higher, but not 18 or higher yet. Um, so, um, yeah, we could solve this uh, by um, downgrading to React 17, but actually there's already an OpenMR for uh, supporting React 18 in Leva. So uh, there's a fair chance that by the time that you're watching this video, uh, Leva already supports React 18. So we're going to keep it like this for now. Um, to, prom to prove that this is, this is the only issue, I'm going to uninstall Leva and show that uh, Everything we now run npm install. Everything works fine except for the single high severity vulnerability. Um, so if you would run npm audit, you'll get to see the details about what's going on here. Um, this is about uh, a specific GSAP version that we are using. Um, you can also see that in the package JSON. We are using version 2.1.3, which has a high um, severity issue. Um, we are going to replace GSAP soon um, in this course, so we don't have to worry about this one. Um, let's for now just reinstall Leva again. Okay, so um, Leva is installed. So yeah, this is all just to mention that uh, yeah, there are still some open issues, but we are either going to resolve those issues ourselves during this course, or uh, yeah, the issues will be resolved in uh, the near future. Uh, so now we can focus on uh, adding support for ESLint and Prettier. For that, we're gonna have to install a few dependencies. Um, we're gonna install all of those as development or dev dependencies. Um, because we only need them while developing, but not in our final build. Uh, so yeah, first of all, we're going to install ESLint, of course, and Prettier, which are needed to support ESLint and Prettier. Uh, then we have the ESLint config Prettier uh, package, which is used to remove unnecessary or conflicting uh, configuration uh, between the two. Then we have the ESLint plugin React, which is used to uh, support React um, in ESLint and we have two packages that we need to support TypeScript in ESLint as well. All right, so those dependencies are installed. Um, so let's start with adding support for Prettier. Uh, Prettier is a formatter that will um, yeah, make sure that our code is formatted in the right way. Um, I can only show you what it looks like exactly once we added support for it. So let's start with that first. Um, and for that, we're going to have to add a configuration file, which is called dot prettier RC. Prettier RC, which is a JSON file. And we don't have to specify any specific configuration yet. Um, so we can just specify an empty object. And the second file that we're going to have to add is a dot prettier ignore file, which is used to ignore uh, specific files that we don't want to run prettier on. 
Um, so let's start by copying over the git ignore. Um, because yeah, we definitely don't want to run prettier on the node modules, for example. Um, so that's a good start. And next to that, we also don't want to run prettier on the existing uh, portfolio. So for that, let's add source slash folio as well. Um, now there's one more thing to, to get this to run smoothly inside of VS Code. And that is, uh, we need to add an extension. Uh, I have, I already have it installed. But if you search for prettier, you'll get to find it automatically. Uh, it will be the first one. <clears throat> uh, make sure to install that one as well. And um, yeah, that will make sure that prettier runs uh, in your VS Code. To make sure that um, VS Code is automatically formatting uh, on save of a file, let's go to our settings uh, by pressing Control Shift P and uh, Clicking the open user settings as JSON option. Uh, and in there you, we can change the settings for editor.default formatter to the extension that we just installed. And let's also change editor.format on save to true so that every time that you save a file, it's going to format using this formatter. And that will look something like uh, the following. Let's open up one of our uh, TypeScript files and make some changes there that are not necessary. Um, so as soon as you save this file, Prettier will automatically fix this for you. Yeah, that's uh, that's how Prettier works. If you are interested in Prettier, uh, yeah, I'd recommend you to check out some other videos about it uh, that's out of scope for this course. Uh, it's just a nice thing to, to keep our code uh, in a good structure as we like. And to make sure that that's the case for the entire project, we can actually add a script to the package set JSON. Um, so I'll copy those over here. Uh, we have a format and a format check script. Uh, the format check script will actually only check if there are any formatting issues. And the format command will actually uh, solve them as well. Um, so yeah, let's make some changes to the main.tsx file again. Um, I'll save them without formatting. And now if I run npm run format check, I will probably mention. Yeah, there we go. There are some code style issues found in source slash main.tsx. Now if we want to, to solve those, we can just run npm run format. There we go. So it, it actually checked all those files. And uh, everything is formatted correctly now. Okay, and for the last part of this video, let's add support for ESLint. Um, and for that, we're going to have to install the ESLint extension. So go to the ex extensions tab, uh, search for ESLint, and probably um, the first option will be the one that you need. Uh, so make sure to install that one. And we're going to have to add a configuration file for ESLint as well. Um, and the configuration file is called .eslintrc. Uh, I actually have all these settings or the configuration already copied, um, but I'll go over each line one by one. Um, so first of all, we're going to have to set the parser here, which is going to be the TypeScript eslint parser, uh, which is one of the uh, dependencies that we installed. This is to make sure that eslint also works correctly with TypeScript. Then we have the environment um, with a browser property uh, set to true. And this is because specific variables such as window or document um, might not be recognized by ESLint automatically. So we have to set a browser to true uh, specifically here. Then we have the extends property uh, where we have an array of the different uh, configuration files that are being extended. Um, so yeah, we're extending the configuration file of Prettier, of the ESLint recommended uh, configuration, and of the plugins that we in installed before. Um, then we have the settings, where we are setting the specific React version so that ESLint is not giving any errors um, because of a specific uh, React version that we are not using. Uh, we set it to detect, and that will mean that it automatically detects the version that we are using inside of the package.json. And last of all, 
we have the parser options where we set um, the source type to module, which uh, needs to happen because we are using modules. And we are setting the ECMAScript version to the latest version since we're using that. Um, so yeah, if we would save that and we go to the main.tsx file, you'll actually get to see uh, a warning now because we are not allowed to use uh, a null, non-null assertion right here, which is here. So we can fix this. Um, so let's um, not assume that we have a root or an element with ID root. Uh, so in this case, the container can be either an HTML element or a null. Um, so once we get that container, we can check if it's actually set or not. And if it's set, we can run all the code that we want to run. And if not, we can, for example, warn the user about this. Uh, let's say no element with ID root found. There we go. Now there's only one issue remaining, and that is that is lint is now also running on uh, Bruno Simon's uh, files, as you can see here, for example. Um, even though we don't want that, um, and the solution is very simple. It's uh, the same as for Prettier. We're gonna have to create an es lint ignore file, and for that, I'll copy over the Prettier ignore file, since um, we want to ignore the same files, and instead. I'm going to call it dot ignore. ignore. Uh, if we would go back to the application.js file, which is part of Bruno Simon's project, you'll see no more warnings or errors there anymore. While if we would go to the main.tsx and we would add the non-null assertion here, it will give our warning. Now to make sure that all our code is valid according to ESLint, uh, we can add two additional scripts to our package.json npm run lint and lint check uh, where lint check will um, run eslint for all the files inside of our source folder with the extensions .ts and .tsx so all the TypeScript and TypeScript React files and um, npm run lint will um, run that same command, but we'll actually try to fix uh, all the warnings and errors that it's found as well. Um, keep in mind that ESLint warnings might not always be uh, resolved automatically, uh, so you'll have to manually check some of them. But yeah, let's save this and run npm run lint check to see if there are any errors right now. Okay, there are no errors. Um, but we can add one like this. If you run it again, there we go. One problem, which is only a warning. So if we would not add the check, but just run npm run lint, this is such an example that won't get fixed automatically. Um, because yeah, it requires um, a manual check. So we'll have to do that. Uh, in our case, we can remove it and that's fine. So in the rest of the code, there are no issues. So we're ready to go uh, and actually start coding um, real React Tree Fiber stuff. Okay, so um, in the next video, we're going to look into the application.js file. Um, what's going on here exactly? And we're going to convert this file to a React component. Uh, so yeah, stay tuned for that. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao!